I think it's time to go back, have a close or step back and have a look onto the people working in the processes to to get to more human centered BPM approach. Welcome to Process Pioneers, the show that takes a deep dive into the minds of decision makers, key influencers, and process experts who are pioneering the world of everything process. Welcome to another episode of Process Pioneers. My name is Daniel Rayner. I'm the host of Process Pioneers. Uh, and in each of these episodes, I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with BPM uh, professionals, BPM specialists, BPM practitioners, those that are putting BPM into practice day in and day out. Um, and this is a particularly exciting episode. Um, one, because of the guest who I'm about to introduce you to, but two, because it's the first time we're, we're doing this live or we're attempting to go live at least anyways. I'm actually not sure whether we are we are live at the moment, um, but we are uh, trying to go live um, on LinkedIn uh, with this. Uh, main reason being is because this whole podcast series, Process Pioneers, um, it's to uh, help, uh, empower, educate, entertain, uh, the BPM community on everything um, that goes into business process management. Um, and so, you know, I, I've got a list of questions that I always like asking my guests, but I want to hear from you guys. Um, what do you want to hear um, from our, our guests in these episodes? Hope, hoping to uh, continue to do these lives moving forward, um, as long as we don't have any technical difficulties with, the, with, with it. Um, but today I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with uh, Mirko uh, Kloppenberg. Now, Mirko is the Head of Process Excellence Methods and Tools at Lufthansa. Uh, now, Mirko um, is also the founder of newprocesslab.com, which we're going to hear a little bit more about. Uh, but Mirko, thanks for joining me. Yeah, Daniel, thanks for inviting me. It's a real honor for me to be on uh, Process Pioneers today. So thank you very much. That's great. And what we, what I'd like to ask, I guess, to, to kick us off and, and so, I guess a thing that or a topic that my audience generally likes to understand and, and get context for is when were you first introduced to the topic of business process management and take us on a bit of a journey leading up to what you're doing today? Yeah, sure. That's actually a good question. And I, I'm not sure when, when I was uh, in touch with process management for the first time, um, I was always looking for process improvements, even in school or doing my civil service. At that time, I, I still remember uh, how to improve the processes there, even without knowing that I'm improving processes. But um, looking back, I think the first process mappings I did uh, in a, an internship at Lufthansa Cargo in Frankfurt. That was a quite nice time sitting in a container next to the runway, watching the planes uh, start and land there. And uh, I had the chance to design a claims and complaints process. Um, and there was, I think in 2002, something like that. So there was no BPMN 2.0 around, something like that it wasn't there. And I just painted some pictures in PowerPoint that uh, draw some boxes there. And um, then it got a little bit more professional uh, when I started working as an application um, development consultant for Lufthansa Cargo. I uh, was in the revenue accounting uh, that we were working at that time. I think it was CaseWise, the tool um, we used there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the day after I signed my contract, the company announced uh, a reduction of headcount uh, due to a process orientation project. That was quite funny, uh, actually. And I, I looked around and I uh, found a position at Lufthansa Technik in Hamburg. And uh, there I had the chance to work as a process modeler for the introduction of a process oriented management system at that time. So I was there uh, sitting together with colleagues in a room, asking stupid questions and try to put their processes into the system. Um, I, I did that for about two years and now I was a little bit bored of this routine going to the meetings, asking all the questions and painting pictures all the time. Um, it was very interesting for sure, but uh, I wanted to do something different. So I uh, moved to the central operations team for that tool. And uh, we then started to roll out uh, the platform within the whole Lufthansa Technik group. So all the subsidiaries all around the world. Uh, first time doing trainings in English. Uh, that was quite funny and uh, I enjoyed it very much. And um, often at the end of these sessions, 
especially with process owners, there was the question, what do we do now? So now we have a process mapped and um, how can we continue with that? And there was a lot of uh, discussion about standardization of the processes of the different locations. So some of the companies were uh, newly founded, some were bored and uh, the processes were completely different. So we developed together with uh, the University of Bamberg a methodology for process standardization. And uh, we also had a closer look onto um, governance, um, process management role concepts. So that was quite interesting doing some research uh, there and um, yeah, trying to find out what the people can do as soon as the processes are documented, how to manage and improve these processes on a global level there. And I did that for quite a while. And then I was asked um, if I would like to take over the role of a so-called process driver within a restructuring process uh, or project within the Lufthansa group, uh, where we are having a closer look onto the overall topic of process and quality management. How can we set that up within the whole Lufthansa group? So create synergies uh, because all the different business units had their own tools and their own methodologies. And we put that together in just one process excellence process. And uh, we established one tool, uh, which is really great uh, to speak the same language uh, and have the same role concept and so on uh, with all the people all around the world. And um, this is actually what I'm doing right now. I'm heading the methods and tools team for providing this uh, application to the group, as well as the related methodology. Yeah. And then uh, last year, Corona or COVID hit us really hard and uh, we were sent uh, on short time work. Um, all the team stayed at home. We were only allowed to work one or two days to keep the system running. And uh, that's when I started to think about uh, my experience, uh, which I had uh, made within the last nearly 20 years. And uh, I tried to combine that with new work aspects. So focusing more on the people. And this is how uh, we created the new process approach. And that's uh, the reason why I then in the end founded newprocesslab.com as a platform to exchange on uh, how to bring both topics together. And that's quite interesting. So I'm more or less a hybrid now, uh, working in both worlds and there are a lot of synergies and makes a lot of fun. So this is more or less uh, the story from the beginning to today, yeah. That's amazing. That's great. Thanks for sharing all of that. And, and there is a lot there that um, I'd love to dive into deeper. I think one of the first things you mentioned there that was quite interesting um, in, in just the opening few sentences there um, was you kind of, you were already doing processes, process management in a way, even without knowing. Um, and I think that's yeah. something I, I hear quite frequently from a lot of my guests is um, they, they kind of fall into the role because they naturally see the world um, through, um, through, uh, through, I guess, a process uh, lens, or if you wanted to call yeah. it that. And, and I think when you take a step back and you look at everything that we do in this world, um, a lot of it is following a sequence of of tasks or activities, which is a process. Like yeah, I woke up, I woke up this morning and uh, I followed the same process that I, I normally do. I like to have a routine. I, I like to. Um, it kind of sets me up for the day. And 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 you know, I guess over. X number of years, I've, I've worked out a, a routine or a process um, that, that helps me prepare myself the best um, for the day ahead. Um, and so I, I thought that was, that was um, an interesting comment, but, but quite a, a reoccurring comment I, um, I am hearing that, you know, people, um, people, some people have a natural tendency to see the world um, through a process. Um, where maybe others not so much. Is that something that you find at uh, Lufthansa uh, that there are some people that are more process oriented and, and get it? They get it um, quicker and easier than maybe some, maybe others. Yeah, definitely. So there are some some people out there, or there were in the beginning in the organization that were just. Um, yeah, naturally uh, open to this topic and it was quite easy to get them on board and others just had no clue about what processes are, even if they were already working in processes for years. So that's definitely true. And uh, I, I think that's the first challenge to, to inspire the people and make them aware that they are working in processes. And uh, for us as BPM guys, um, we role models for that and um, 
yeah, do the same uh, for your own work as we teach the people out there for their business processes. So this is something for me, which is quite important. Not only tell them what to do, but do it for the BPM process itself on your own and um, think in processes, use the tools to communicate the processes and so on. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And then something else you mentioned there was um, when, when I guess the, the process modelers would end up, I guess, finishing those process maps, um, the question that you, you sort of mentioned then was, well, what do you do now? And I think that's such an important question to ask if you haven't already determined what you're going to do um, once you've got those processes documented. I mean, I, I'm, there are, there are, many different stories I've heard of where an organization has embarked on a, a process mapping or a process documentation sort of um, initiative that, that lasts for six months, 12 months, two years, only to get to the end of it with all of this process documentation, but no real purpose or why or driver behind, yeah. well, what do we do? What do we do with this information now that it's documented? So I think that's um, such an important um, question to be asking is, what do we do now, now that we've got that, that information down? Yeah, exactly. And um, as I already said, um, I would always recommend uh, to do the same as we tell the people. So there should be a BPM process established uh, describing what these roles should do, like having a process owner and uh, maybe a role like a process architect, which we have defined there in, in our role concept and uh, then provide a process to them. So process of process management or life cycle um, that starts what I would recommend now after bringing um, new work and uh, BPM together to start with a process purpose phase. So first sit together with a sample of uh, people working in your process community to define the purpose of your process. Um, so looking onto the strategy and the, the purpose of the company and how can this process contribute to that and then um, use that as basis for the further development of the process strategy of your specific process and then always refer back to um, the process purpose when designing the process in detail so that you can always use your purpose to inspire the people uh, have that as a reference, answer questions, why are we doing this? And uh, then even within the implementation phase, when you train the people working in the process, you can still use the purpose to inspire them, motivate them working in that process and give that as a guideline when they have questions in the execution of the process. So they can always refer back to the purpose. Why are we doing this? And uh, use that when they are executing the process. And um, having some kind of BPM process established, like I just explained with these different phases and then hopefully as a life cycle so that after implementation and steering, you go back with the learnings and uh, improve or innovate the process. I think that's uh, the most important point there, uh, which I would recommend to everyone uh, starting with process management and going beyond just modeling of processes. Right, right. And I'd suppose that depending on the area of the business you're working in and, and depending on the organization you're working in, um, the purpose behind that process um, will be different, um, whether it's um, process optimization to generate um, more revenue, to get more market share, to comply with certain laws and regulations. Um, you know, there are some organizations out there where um, the, compl the compliance, complying to a process could be the difference between life and death. Um, so it's, I guess, depending on where you sit in the organization, you, you're going to probably be, be sort of be um, driven or motivated by a different purpose, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. And that's always process specific and it should contribute to the overall purpose of the organization for sure, as well as to the strategy. But in the end, it's always specific to the process itself. What are we looking at? What process are we designing here? Um, who are the stakeholders, um, the customers of the process, and how can we 
um, provide value to them. And uh, besides this uh, more or less outside perspective of the process, I would always uh, recommend to have a look onto the, the inside perspective. So what are the values of the people working in the process? This is also contributing to the process purpose and how it is designed. So if you have a community which is open for innovations and curious what is going on, the design will look completely different as in a strict uh, regulated environment, uh, I guess, where you have to fulfill all the requirements, like in aviation, um, we still have to fulfill a lot of legal and normative requirements. And we have to make sure that the processes uh, are complying with these requirements. Uh, maybe there is not that much in innovation in the processes then, um, but uh, this is always depending on how the community is working on the process and how they see their contribution to the overall purpose there, I think. Yeah, right. That's good. And um, when you see, I guess, BPM um, adopted and implemented in an organization, obviously you're, you're working at a, a large organization, but I know that you're well connected with many BPM practitioners. And, um, and I, I would suppose that you um, are gleaning from other people about, I guess, diff different experiences on, in how they're adopting uh, that BPM approach. Uh, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges an organization faces when they're adopting BPM? I think one of the biggest problems we had and we benchmarked a lot on this question was how to bring um, the process world and the business world together. So I, I really hate this saying and after having a modeling project for half a year or longer, uh, of the process owner who said, okay, now let's get back to business and let's do business. But what is business if it's not about improving and managing your processes? So um, this is for me, uh, the biggest question there, how to close that gap. And um, what, what we um, did to close that gap was uh, in a research project together with the University of Bamberg, we developed a role concept, which is called uh, FAR Plus, uh, Framework for Assignment of Responsibilities. And this first differentiates between a design responsibility on the one inside, so the process responsibility, as well as the execution responsibility on the other side for the business itself. That's where the money is, where the processes are executed, but on the other side, um, that's where the design is made. And um, we have two core roles within these both worlds are in the design, it's the role of the process owner and in the execution, it's the line manager of the area executing this specific process. So there can be a lot of instances. So with several executions of the process, but only one design. And now the question is, how do you bring together these two worlds? To whom do you assign the role of the process owner and uh, the one of the line manager? And can you bring that together in an organization and how do they interact? How do they communicate? And this is something uh, I find really interesting. And uh, we researched a lot on that and we uh, implemented a concept there, which is working quite well, I think. And I, I just had an exchange with a uh, health insurance company about two or three weeks ago. And they also used a similar role concept where they brought together these two worlds. So there are other examples, which is quite interesting. And um, yeah, this is what I would recommend to have a closer look onto how to bring these worlds together uh, using a role concept. And in addition to, to these uh, two key roles of the process owner and line manager on the one hand side, um, another key role for me is the one of the process architect. So that's uh, in my world or in that concept, uh, the helping hand of the process owner for designing the processes. And um, this should be on an employee level, someone who's working full time on this specific process, uh, trained with methodologies to really do process management, um, bring the people together, perform workshops and uh, design the process and then implement these processes and do the trainings, um, moderate the community working in the process. So this is uh, my recommendation, always have a closer look onto that and um, train the people and uh, enable them for managing their processes and make them visible. This is also really important from my point of view. So in the past, um, that role was not really defined within the Lufthansa world in the beginning. So we had something like a process owner 
but that was it. And there was always a uh, management level position um, who was more or less accountable for what is going on within process design and maybe also in, in the execution. And after introducing the role concept and making sure that we have these two areas of responsibility and the different roles, um, more and more people taking over the role of the process architect popped up in the organization because they were already there, but nobody knows that they were there and what they were doing. And now we right. can call them process architects and we have a possibility to um, train this community, bring them together, facilitate the exchange. That's so fascinating to see the people and how happy they can be when, when they have others to exchange on their problems and so on. So this is what I would recommend um, uh, just uh, also think about measures how to moderate your own BPM community. That's great. That's really good. And I guess another another challenge that I um, I often hear is, or, or maybe it's more of a, a question. I, it is a challenge and a question and and a debate sometimes. But um, when adopting BPM, do you need um, that uh, top down uh, sponsorship? Do you need that exec level sponsorship? And, and I'm just going to refer to one of the questions that came through. Gary yeah. Irons um, wanted to ask bottom up or top down when why um very succinct question but i'll hand it over to you so we can sort of crack open this topic a little more yeah that's hard to answer so at least you need someone providing the budget for all the activities i think that's the minimum what i'm experiencing right now is due to the crisis and uh, we are on short time work still and we are only allowed to work on the operational necessary topics it's really hard to do the fun stuff uh, moderate the community um, train the people this is something uh, we can only do on a very minimum level right now um, but for me, that's key to the success of um, process management. So especially training in a then bottom-up approach, uh, this role of the process architect, the person working more or less full-time on uh, this specific business process, um, driving the improvement, moderating the community, motivating the people working in the process. Um, so I, I think that's... A little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more important uh, than the top-down approach. And there, I would say it always depends on uh, who is your top management. Uh, what history do they have? Do they know about processes? So did they go up the, the hierarchy um, before um, 2000? I would say before the bigger implementation of process management initiatives. So uh, did they grow up uh, without processes or not? So if they are familiar with um, BPM, then it's quite easy and you will get their support. Uh, if they got up there before, I think it's really hard to convince them to get the money and then you can just do it um, bottom up, um, just uh, convince them with the success of smaller activities and uh, yeah, just uh, prove to them that it works. So. It always depends, I would say. So there is no either or, it's both ways and uh, bring the worlds together from my point of view. That's great. And I love what you were saying there about um, understanding what their history is. Um, so what, what? So when you're talking to senior leadership or that exec level to, to I guess, understand, well, what is their appetite for process management? What is their history? Um, have they been in this organization for the last 10, 20 years or have they come across from another organization yeah. may maybe that had adopted BPM and had implemented BPM successfully? Uh, so understanding, okay, in the, in the exec level, who, who do I need to talk to um, that, that is going to resonate with um, the idea of process management? And, and there, I mean, we have a lot of people listening to this um, podcast Podcast that um, they're in it working in an organization where there isn't a huge um, BPM uh, presence or focus, or it's not given um, a lot of attention to. Uh, we, we've had we've got some people that are working in an organization with thousands of employees, um, and the, the process team is um, is scattered. There's very few people that, that are tasked to manage the business processes. And so I guess they're trying to understand, well, if I, if I, if I don't have budget, if I don't have resources, um, 
what impact can I make? And, and, and I think um, as you finished then, you were saying, you know, you can still start small. You can still find yeah. small areas where you can prove value. And if you prove value on a small on a small level, um, you know, the more problems you solve through process management, you, you're going um, you, to be sure to have um, more problems thrown at you um, to solve. Yeah, exactly. And what I would recommend to the people, if there is no real budget available, just try to inspire the people. So this is where, from my point of view, uh, this new process approach comes into place a little bit, um, starting to inspire the people and um, yeah, give, give a meaning to the process. So define the purpose of the process to motivate the people working on that and involve them. So um, involve the community from a BPM process perspective. So your process managers out there, your architects, your process owners, bring them together. Just um, make sure that they can get more information on how to improve their own processes. So yeah, just moderate the community. This is something, uh, think about how to develop these people in the organization, which is not that expensive. So if you uh, offer some online sessions or uh, even lunch sessions, uh, bring them together just to talk and uh, yeah, inspire them a little bit, connect them uh, with each other. That's something which I would always pick up with regards to new work aspects and then go deeper and deeper and uh, push it forward. That's great. That's great. And, and finding out what motivates them, um, what, what keeps yeah. them awake at, at night, um, what, what are they concerned exactly. about yeah. when, they, when they go into work each day? Um, that's great. Well, we've got another question uh, that came through earlier from Richard Feathers. Um, so Richard asks, uh, what are the key roles in business process management and what are the shifts from those in current functionally managed businesses what are the key skills needed yeah okay as i already said um, with this role concept we developed uh, we differentiate between design and execution i think that's uh, the first important aspect on that so make sure that the people know that there is a difference between we're now working on the execution and the design on the other hand and then establish the role of the process owner that's the one who is accountable for the process design and uh, for the continuous improvement and the overall coordination, but not for the execution. This is always uh, execution part of the line manager who is um, leading the employees working in the process. So have that differentiation first and then add roles on the design side. So what we also found out in addition to uh, having the role of a process owner defined, that should be the one on a management level who is accountable for the real definition of the process. So knowing the roles, define these roles, the activities, and being accountable for that, even from an outside perspective. But then on a more strategic level, um, I would recommend to differentiate the roles and also have something like, we call it process domain owner. Uh, that's a role being accountable for the strategy of a group of processes. And that's also the one who nominates the process owner within the domain. So have the possibility to also um, make the people visible in the top management that define the process strategy and that they are not necessarily also the ones defining all the details of the process. So therefore we have the role of the process owner as well. And then the architect on an employee level um, who should be trained to yeah, manage, design, improve, implement the processes um, on the other side. And there is an, another role, like the one of the process manager who is uh, organizing the, the execution or coordinates the execution throughout different organizational units, because um, often the line managers only have a closer look onto their own organization and they don't care what happens left and right of their own org unit. And that's where the role of the process manager in our concept comes into the game and uh, make sure that the overall process at a specific location runs smooth. So this is what, what I would recommend, where I personally have very good experience with, and um, there then it makes sense to train the people regarding to the necessary skills of their roles, depending on the level where you assign it to. But key role for me there is the one of the architect, uh, and um, therefore, uh, I would always uh, set up a cool training to, to enable these people uh, performing their role. 
That's great. That's really good. And, and it is so important to have that cross, cross-functional view to, to understand that, you're, you, you know, the process in front of you, um, it, what, what happens before that, that part of the process, what happens after that part of yeah. the process, what happens upstream, downstream, and, and what are the impacts, you know, if you're, if you're only focused on your area um, overall, are you actually um, bringing more value to the business um, if you're only concerned about one particular area and you're not actually aware of the negative impact it's having upstream or downstream? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's good. So um, talking about, um, obviously we've been talking about challenges that organizations face, but um, I guess when trying to get a sponsorship and buy-in from that senior leadership level, um, they're going to want to, I guess, understand or, or um, yeah, yeah, I guess understand what are the what are the tangible results? What are, what are the what's the value that BPM is going to bring to this organization? Um, sh- uh, you know, maybe in the form of a proof of concept or or case studies or show me what show show me the tangible value that it actually does bring. Do you have any? I guess um, when we're talking about wins, um, do you have any examples of where a BPM has been implemented and adopted and it's delivered uh, significant value to the organization? organization, um, whether it's on a small incremental change or improvement, or whether it's on a much, I guess, bigger or more significant impact? Mm. Uh, I think it always depends um, on why an organization has established a BPM system, what's the purpose, and what would you like to achieve or avoid <laughs> with the processes. So within the Lufthansa Technic world, which is highly regulated, um, we just wanted to provide to all the employees uh, some kind of uh, system where they can rely on, just look into that and uh, then be sure that they have all the information they need to execute the process and uh, to make sure that they fulfill all legal and normative requirements. So that was the target when we introduced the process management system within the Lufthansa Technic Group in the beginning. And um, there then maybe indicators like audit findings uh, when authority comes or a customer and audits the organization, do they have findings or they, do they find out ah, the people know what they are doing, what they are supposed to do, and they act according to the processes. So it could be one indicator for sure. Uh, in general, I would say um, another nice indicator is uh, customer feedback. So having happy customers, because in the end, that's why we're doing that. Uh, to serve the customers of the specific processes. And uh, I think you can only have happy customers if the people in the process, uh, working in the process and working on the process are at least somehow uh, happy with what they are doing. They know why they are doing that and uh, are motivated uh, working on that. And this is something you can always question with surveys or talk to the people, invite them, having workshops uh, to find out what they think about their own process, how happy are they and what ideas for improvement do they have. So I would say this could be a way um, to find out more about um, the success of what you're doing there Uh, on a very detailed level, uh, independent from what kind of process we are talking about. Just uh, talk to the people and find out what they say and talk to the customers. Are they happy or complaining? So quite general answer, uh, I think, but um, could be applicable for all the processes out there. Yes. Yeah, that's great. And um, and do you have a, like a, a story or an example of um, where you know a process might have been reduced from, um, I guess, in terms of um, efficiency? It, it took ten days. Now it takes two days. It took five months. Now it takes two months. Or do you have any examples of that where, um, yeah, that there's been such uh, such an imp- uh, significant impact because I guess. Um, you know, if, you, if you're not looking at your processes, there could be significant amount of waste there that you're not even aware of, um, you know, it, with, with especially large organizations that have quite a history, um, there could have been a, a series of Band-Aid fixes um, to a process, which over time just ended up being this really inefficient process. So do, do you have a, a story you could share where um, something was done where, where it, it, was, it was quite remarkable, the outcome? Um, yeah, I think I have some examples, but what came first to my mind was, uh, the, the general methodology on how to handle that. So first 
Um, what I can see in our organization that there was um, always a differentiation between the Lean, Kaizen, Six Sigma activities, which were trying to improve uh, processes within one location, for example. Um, so within one workshop where they repair the components or for the boarding uh, at one location at an airport, um, that's where they try to improve the process locally. And what we often missed was to close the gap back to the process design on this higher level of the process definition and then scale the local ideas. And there are really cool ideas out there um, on a global level by putting these local improvement ideas into the global design and then roll it out worldwide. So I, I think this is the real challenge um, of all the different projects. And I think there were a lot of lean initiatives uh, where they try to reduce turnaround time of components in the workshops or uh, reduce the time for the boarding um, of an aircraft at a specific location. Um, actually, because I was more working on the overall process management topic, not on the smaller initiatives, I, I can't give you these great examples with regards to numbers. But um, we, we demonstrated that one time uh, was in uh, yeah, a training event where we invited around about 250 people to a training facility in Seeheim, which is the big location for Lufthansa training courses. And um, there we invited the participants to experience the process of process management in a so-called pizza simulation. So um, they were split up into smaller teams and um, they were the owners of a local pizzeria, which belongs to a bigger pizza chain. And um, they had a local process owner and local architect and local process improvement guy and so on. And first they, they played the simulation locally in their room for their um, pizzeria and produced pizza and um, counted uh, or we, we registered the time that they needed and they got points for that. And then we compared after the first round um, how these uh, 10 to 15 teams performed and the performance was completely different. And uh, then they uh, improved locally and we saw improvements in the indicators as well, but still quite a um, broad picture of in the vari variances of the indicators. And um, then we, we asked uh, to have one person from each team to be sent to a workshop where we combined all the experiences from the different locations and uh, created something like a best practice process out of all right. the different locations. So they invented uh, something like a template on how to put all the, um, the, the ingredients on the pizza and so on, and how they split up uh, the roles, who is doing what and which batches and so on. And then we rolled out this process to all the locations. So more or less overnight, we introduced a new process to all the locations and they performed this process again. And the results were just boom, going up and uh, everybody was performing on a very good level. And uh, that was a nice challenge and a really cool game to experience how process management process can contribute to the performance of the overall organization. So that was quite fun. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next chance to play the game in a bigger setting. Um, that was great. Yeah. That's amazing. And um, when I guess when making those process improvements and exporting them out to different teams, uh, different people, the, the process participants, the process performers, um, how do you get buy-in um, from them? Uh, obviously, we've, we've spoken about getting sponsorship from senior leadership to get them on board um, because they're the ones that um, hold the, the purse the purse sprit, uh, strings, so to speak. Yeah. Um, they're, they're the ones that will give you the budget, the resources, things like that. But but um, when you're working with the process participants and performers, I, I could imagine that if you don't have uh, buy-in from them, you, you, you could potentially face a bit yeah. of resistance. So in that example, um, you, you've come up with the best practice for making a pizza. Um, it's the fastest, it's the tastiest, it's it's the best process for making the best pizza. Um, but then maybe you've got someone out there um, and who's been a chef 
um, and he's been making pizzas for the last 20 years and you're coming along saying, um, hey, hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chef, um, we've actually got a better way to make a tastier pizza. Yeah. Um, you could imagine that guy is going to have a bit of resistance because he's like, hang on a second, I'm the one that's doing the job. So how do you, how do you get these people on board that are actually performing the, the processes? Yeah, that's one of the new process principles to um, really integrate the people working in the process into the work on the process. So uh, whenever you start an initiative, make sure that um, the people working in the process are aware of what is coming up. So uh, communicate what you're planning to do and offer them the possibility to join these activities. Um, for sure, it's not always possible to have in the end um, more than 10 to 15 pizza chefs in, in the workshop. That doesn't make sense. But um, as long as you communicate transparent what you are going to do and give them the chance to say, ah, okay, I would like to participate um, in the workshops or just give them the, the opportunity to have a look onto the results afterwards. So be as transparent as possible with, with what you're doing and offer the opportunity for them to comment on, provide feedback on the results of the workshop so that they can bring in their ideas. I think that's really important uh, to integrate the people working in the process into the work on the process and could be done by transparent communication and uh, options to bring in the ideas and so on. Yeah, and I would say that these people that are the process participants, they're probably in the best position to, I guess, identify um, areas of weakness. Um, and maybe maybe those people that are, you know, there are plenty of processes, inefficient processes out there, and, and people are just performing them um, daily without really giving giving it any thought maybe that that organization doesn't have a, a process improvement culture that that um, encourages um, bringing ideas to the table like hey this process isn't working i've got a better idea yeah absolutely so it's really important to to trust the people that are working in the process and uh, yeah provide them the opportunity to participate in what is coming up and then uh, give them the freedom to make their own decisions yeah so as you already said, the people working in the process are often the ones who already know how to improve the process and what could be done. But uh, then you have to trust them to, to let them bring in their ideas and um, yeah, open the room for these people so that they can really implement the changes on their own, uh, for sure in a structured way so that you can bring that into process design again and then roll it out worldwide. Um, but this is what I recommend to, to really trust the people there and uh, involve them. That's great. And, and when you have adopted BPM, um, you've set up your uh, process center of excellence, you're starting to get momentum um, behind this BPM approach. What are some objections that you are, are likely or potentially to, uh, to face um, as, as, uh, as the BPM approach rolls out across the organization? It depends. <laughs> I think it always depends on, on the target setting, why you're doing this and uh, on the purpose of the organization and uh, the, the purpose of the BPM system. So it's hard to give a general answer there. Uh, I would always recommend to look into the specifics of the organization and then uh, try to find out how to yeah, bring it to the next level. So it depends on the maturity, where they are right now. And um, maybe this also varies within the overall organization so that there are uh, some areas or some processes which are already quite mature where you have people um, that are skilled working as process architects and uh, have already uh, good indicators in place. And uh, maybe they are already talking about process mining and uh, RPA. Uh, in, in other areas, they haven't processed documented yet. So it always depends. And then you have to go there and uh, support them uh, based on their local challenges to create the, the overall best value, I would say. So for me, it's more or less some kind of assessment um, before deciding what exactly to do. And if there is nothing, then I would always recommend to start with thinking about the purpose. Why are we doing this? And then 
just follow the, the general process life cycle, think about the strategy, design the process, or try to improve what is already there and uh, implement that. That's great. And, and talking about process mining and RPA, um, what do you think the future of uh, BPM looks like? Obviously, these technologies, they're, there's, um, they're uh, quite in use at the moment. There's uh, quite a lot of hype around these technologies and, and organisations are diving into these tools to understand how, understand how can that they deliver significant value to what we're doing. Um, over the next two, three, five years, um, what, what are the trends that you were noticing? Um, and I guess the second, second part of that question is what do you think organisations should be focusing on, should be investing into? Um, because it's quite easy to, I guess, um, see a case study or a success story from another organisation, but is that going to work for your organisation? Maybe, maybe not. Um, so, yeah, so let's, let's um, yeah. flesh that out a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, like, yeah, there is a real hype regarding process uh, mining and RPA at the moment. And we are also looking into that topics and uh, there are some quite interesting initiatives going on. And wh what I see is that um, this somehow makes BPM a little bit more sexy uh, than it was in the past when we're talking about just modeling. And then let's get back to business. Um, so also from uh, senior management, there is um more uh, how should i say they 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 uh, are aware of these methods and they are interested in the results and they would like to apply the, these uh, so there are some cases um going on right now in our organization as well and this will definitely be a topic uh, where we have to have a closer look onto in the future with great potentials i guess but um Besides that, there are so many mature methods out there. And uh, for me, the question is always, how do we get to the next level then? And um, therefore, I, I would always start with uh, some kind of assessment, see where we are, what maturity level do we have right now, and then um, apply all the fundamentals, like having um, process management process established, have roles defined, um, run that with indicators, make sure that the process of process management is on a mature level in the organization. And um, then for me, it's uh, this uh, new process part to have a closer look onto the people. So in the past, it was all about indicators, higher, faster, further, um, always looking onto the numbers, squeezing out FTEs. And I think it's time to go back, have a close or step back and have a look onto the people working in the processes to to get to more human centered bpm approach um starting with principles like inspiring the people for processes so that they are aware of that they are a part of the processes trust the people involve them into the development of the processes uh, think about how to foster the development of the people uh, all these kinds of aspects. And what I also find is a quite interesting way of improving processes, have a closer look onto the cooperation of the people working in the process. So how do these roles interact? How do they sit together in the reality? Are they in one room? Uh, are they working remote? Uh, which infrastructure are they using? So uh, really take the requirements of the people working in the process into account when, when designing the process. And uh, the most fascinating um, principle there for me is um, all the cultural and diversity aspects. So um, in the past, I was always fighting to standardize processes and uh, culture was always a hurdle for that. But uh, now I see it in a different way because you can really profit from bringing in all the different cultures in the process and increase process diversity, uh, call it like that. Um, that's very fascinating. So this is um, my recommendation. Have a look onto the people, onto all these uh, new work aspects and uh, use that to bring your process to the next level besides using all these um, more or less mature methods and uh, newer ones like process mining and RPA, have a look onto the people. 
That's great. That's really good. And um, I do want to touch on uh, newprocesslab.com and, and what you're doing there. But um, just for, for the people that are listening right now, um, this is the first time I'm saying for the people listening right now, and we actually have people listening right now. Um, That's cool. <laughs> um, please um, pop any questions that you have. We, we don't have a, a long left. We're probably going to probably keep going for another five minutes or so. But um, if you've got any questions for Mirko, please uh, ch uh, chuck them in the chat um, and um, yeah, we'll aim to answer them. We've already been answering a, a couple of questions that have popped up. I know uh, Michael Fox had a couple of questions about new process uh, lab.com and, and what you're doing there. Um, Gary, good to see you on. Um, at the moment, we actually um, answered your question quite early on um, in, the, in the session. Um, so uh, feel free to watch the recording of this. Um, but yeah, while we wait for any any further questions to come in um, to the chat, um, Mirko, talk to us about newprocesslab.com and, and what you're doing there, what your thoughts are there. Yeah, that's basically a platform to bring people together to um, push this human-centered BPM approach ahead. So uh, what we did in the past was that uh, I invited people to think tanks and we just got together in an online session and talked about different aspects like culture or trust the people, how can we do that or how to improve um, the cooperation in the process. So these were the different topics that we already had. And a big one was uh, talking about process purpose. So that was so cool to see how many people are interested in that. And we together developed um, kind of canvas, uh, process purpose canvas. That's a template you can fill out. And in the end, it helps you to formulate a process purpose um, statement and uh, can be used in workshops and so on. So this is what I also um, provide to the community on uh, newprocesslab.com. So if you go there, you, you can download a checklist and you can find process descriptions on how to develop process purpose, for example. And it's a community platform, I would say. That's amazing. That's right. And, and for those that um, have... Um want to understand more about having a process purpose we do cover that earlier uh, in the conversation so if you're watching live or listening live um, feel free to um, watch the recording afterwards or if you're watch, watching the recording right now we, we we touched on that earlier in the conversation about um, setting up a, a purpose behind the processes that you're doing um, but Mirko um, I just want to thank you so much uh, for sitting down with uh, me today it's been quite exciting to be able to do the first process pioneers uh, LinkedIn uh, live episode with you. Um, it's, um, you know, it's, it's uh, a little bit more for me to think about um, making sure that all <laughs> from a technical point of view, everything's working, but it seems to be working fine. And when we've got, we've had people interacting in the, in the chat there, which is great to hear. Um, so yeah, definitely something I want to um, keep doing moving forward. But uh, I guess on behalf of the, the BPM community, thanks for having this chat with me. Um, I learned a lot and I'm sure the audience um, will have learned uh, a lot too. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. It was a pleasure and great fun. So for me, a good start into the day. And uh, let's see uh, how this journey will continue. Thank you very much.